uBlock Origin Lite is an app blocker that's been gaining a lot of popularity recently. And the reason for that is because its author ego, uBlock Origin, the most popular app and content blocker extension ever, has been forcefully removed from newer versions of Chrome, as well as some other Chromium-based browsers. So if you're one of those affected users, or just simply looking for a good alternative to uBlock Origin, this is the video for you. I'll be covering how to install and use uBlock Origin Lite before delving into its various configuration options. So let's get started. First off, I'll be using Google Chrome for demonstration purposes in this video. Steps for Microsoft Edge should be very similar as well. And another thing, make sure you do not install uBlock Origin Lite next to another similar app blocker. So to install uBlock Origin Lite, go to Chrome's web store. Once you're there, search for uBlock Origin Lite. You should see a page similar to this. Scroll down and make sure that the version you've clicked on is offered by Raymond Hill or Gore Hill. He's the developer of the extension. Do not skip this verification step because there are multiple other extensions with very similar names. And if you install the wrong one, you can get into trouble. Okay, let's click the button to install it. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to sync the settings, but the choice is totally up to you. Next up, we'll make sure the extension is visible by pinning it to the toolbar. This step is optional, but I'll suggest you do so while familiarizing yourself with this extension. It will save you a lot of time later on. Finally, I'm just going to make sure uBlock Origin Lite can run when my browser is in incognito mode as well. Again, an entirely optional step, and the choice is up to you. And by the way, for those who are worried that the extension is asking for too much permission, rest assured, this extension is open source and under constant scrutiny by many people. Without those permissions, this extension won't work, and you'll be pointless to even install it. And believe it or not, you can actually stop watching right now, and uBlock Origin Lite will begin blocking ads and other nasty stuff in your browser. But if you want to really take advantage of uBlock Origin Lite's power, you will have to continue watching. Let's go through the extensions interface first, so you get a general idea of what you can do with it. And it will also make it much easier to configure the extension settings later. For demonstration purposes, I'll use two websites. Let's see. Off the top of my head. Okay. A few moments later. Let's start with the extension's shield icon. If the shield is red in color, it means uBlock Origin Lite is currently active on the page. If it's grayed out, that means uBlock Origin Lite is disabled on that page. The number on the shield represents the number of rules that uBlock Origin Lite has used to block certain things on the current page. Click on the shield and you'll see a pop-up panel. The domain name of the current page you're on occupies the first line on the panel. Next comes the slider, which indicates filtering mode or level of blocking for the site you are on. The default level is optimal, and it gives the best balance of blocking and privacy. Now, if you move the slider all the way to no filtering, the page will automatically refresh, and the shield will turn gray, meaning uBlock Origin Light is now inactive and not blocking anything at all. You may want to do this if you are using a hosted service like Google Workspaces or Microsoft 365 and prefer not to block anything for those sites. Or you may want to do this because you are working on your own business site and want to see what it's like without any blocking. After all, most people on the web still do not use ad blockers. But on the other side, we can see plenty of ads. Next, if you move the slider to basic, you see the shield turn red to indicate that uBlock Origin Lite is active and blocking stuff on the page. Notice the ads you saw earlier, they've been replaced with boxes now. Basic mode is what you should drop to if you are facing problems working on a site and want to see if it's uBlock Origin Lite that's the cause of the problem. 
If the problem persists, then drop to no filtering to see whether it is the extension or the site itself that is the cause. Sometimes, it can even be the built-in ad blocking features of your browser that's the problem. Now let's see what happens when we switch from basic back to the default optimal level. The ad boxes no longer show up. It's as if the ads never existed in the first place. Certainly makes reading the page much less distracting. Now let's see what happens when we move the slider to complete to activate uBlock Origin Lite's highest blocking level. I don't see any difference with the optimal level. It's actually not a surprise. And there's one really important thing I want you to keep in mind. uBlock Origin Lite is more than an ad blocker that blocks only the visual things that you see on a web page. It also protects you against bad stuff that usually runs in the background of web pages and will seldom see. Stuff such as malware, trackers, and crypto miners. So don't you think it's not working if you see no visual difference between different slider settings? Behind the scenes, uBlock Origin Lite has definitely activated more blocking rules. The shields counter can sometimes give you a clue to what's happening. By the way, every change you make with the slider is permanent. uBlock Origin Lite will remember the custom blocking level and reuse it the next time you visit the same site. So, we're done with the sliders. Let's look at what the row of icons do. The element zapper lets you turn off certain parts of a page temporarily. It's very handy if you want to take a screenshot and don't want something to appear in it. Just refresh the page if you want to see the content again. The issue reporter allows you to contact the developers if you keep facing a problem when using the extension. Please respect their time and always do a search for a solution to your problem online before doing so. Remember, they are not paid to work on uBlock Origin Lite and have families and friends too. The cog icon will open up a settings dashboard. We will cover that in detail later. For now, have a look at the list of filters that are currently being used to generate rules for blocking ads and other stuff. You can click the more or less buttons to customize how much detail you prefer to see. So that's it for the extensions interface. Click the cog icon and let's dive into customizing uBlock Origin Lite's default settings. What you see now is called the dashboard. Let's go through the tabs, but in reverse order. The about tab shows you information about the extension. There's nothing to configure here, but will be useful if you want to know more about the uBlock Origin Lite project, especially if you're interested in looking through the source code or changes made to the extension. Next, the filter list tab. This is where uBlock Origin Lite's real power lies. These lists are used by uBlock Origin Lite to create the blocking rules that the browser then uses to block malicious ads and other undesired stuff. There are six sections altogether, and the lists that are checked are what you saw earlier in the extensions panel. For the default section, all the boxes should be checked because they are the bare minimum that makes uBlock Origin Lite a content blocker in the first place. For the privacy section, I leave both of them unchecked, but you may want to turn them on if you understand the technical stuff I'm about to say. Here's what they do. The first one removes tracking parameters from URLs to prevent user tracking via link sharing and navigation. And the second one blocks web requests from public sites to private IP addresses, helping prevent certain types of network attacks. By the way, anytime you want to know more about a specific list, just click the house icon next to it. For the malware protection security section, all boxes should also be checked. This is what makes uBlock Origin Lite so invaluable. It doesn't just block ads, it blocks malware that can harm your computer as well. Here's what they do. The first one blocks domains and URLs associated with malware, phishing, and other security threats. The second one combines multiple sources to block domains known for distributing malware or engaging in malicious activity. The annoyances section is what I like to refer to as a quality of life choice because it can make your browsing experience less stressful. Personally, I'll only recommend that you turn them on only after you have grown tired of the same type of annoyances. Here's what each list does. The first one blocks or hides cookie consent panels and pop-ups that appear due to privacy regulations, very common when you visit the website for the first time. The second one targets a variety of non-ad annoyances such as pop-ups, overlays, and site widgets, very common with blocks. 
The third one removes overlay elements that block access to content, such as newsletter signups or login prompts, like those that you see on the New York Times website. Note that only the overlay notice is removed, but you still do not get to access the content behind any paywalls. The fourth one blocks embedded social media widgets, like those from Facebook, X, and so on, that tracks users or clutter pages. And finally, the last one blocks live chat and help desk widgets that appear on websites, reducing distractions and potential tracking. For the miscellaneous section, I'll leave them as they are. Here's what they do. The first one is a long-standing host file that blocks a wide range of ad and malware domains at the DNS level. The second one merges several reputable host files to provide broad protection against adware and malware domains. You definitely don't need to check the last one unless you are a programmer. It's used to test whether uBlock Origin Lite itself is working properly. The Regions Languages section contains filter lists tailored to block ads, trackers, and annoyances that are specific to certain countries, regions, or language communities. This list address local advertising networks, region-specific nuisances, and culturally relevant tracking methods that may not be covered by a global filter list. You may want to turn some of them on if you are a regular visitor to non-English sites. And finally, we have the settings tab. For the behavior section, it's best to leave all boxes checked. The first option allows you to turn off the display of the number counter on uBlock Origin Lite's shield icon. I would advise against this. If you do not want to be distracted by the number on the shield, just unpin uBlock Origin Lite from your browser's toolbar. The second option allows you to turn off page auto refresh when you change the slider level. You then need to manually refresh the page every time you change slider level. It's not worth the hassle. The default filtering mode section shows the same sliders you saw earlier. There's no need for me to explain what each mode does because you've already seen the effects they have on web pages earlier. But there are some additional points I do want to make. The default value is now optimal, although it used to be basic in earlier versions of uBlock Origin Lite. It strikes a balance between restricting browser permissions necessary for uBlock Origin Lite to work at the risk of potentially missing out on blocking some sites. Personally, I'll recommend setting this to complete so you get the highest level of protection. However, your browser might require you to grant the extension more permissions. This shouldn't be a problem if you have used uBlock Origin previously and are already familiar with the extension developer's reputation. Whatever mode you choose, remember that this is only a default setting. You can always change the blocking level on a per site basis like what we did earlier in the extensions panel. For the enable strict blocking box, leave it as checked. uBlock Origin Lite will show a warning page if it detects that the site you are visiting is on its block list. You then have the chance to decide whether you want to proceed. This feature has saved me many times when I accidentally click on a link that led me to a bad site. Finally, the no filtering text box. Remember when we moved the slider to no filtering earlier on? That's why you see the URL here. Every time you slide the slider to no filtering on the extension panel, uBlock Origin Lite will automatically add the website's domain into this text box. Removing a domain from the text box will make uBlock Origin Lite revert back to the default filtering mode the next time you visit the site. If you already have a list of websites you want to unblock, you can save yourself a lot of hassle by just adding them here, instead of doing what we did earlier. With that, we've come to the end of today's video. uBlock Origin Lite is a great choice for those of you who can no longer work with uBlock Origin, but still want dependable and efficient ad and content blocking. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.